Journey is one of the keepers of the throne of classic rock and roll, still selling out arenas even with numerous lineup changes because it's always been about their great songs. Up next, we count down the top five Journey hidden gems, you know, the deep tracks that in most cases are just as good as the hits. With commentary from the band members themselves, it's a can't miss on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. Make sure that you subscribe below right now if music is running through your veins. Be a part of exclusive interviews and stories of the rock and roll era straight from the artists, content you really won't find anywhere else. And make sure to join us on Patreon to help us craft this channel and for more content. Now this week on our Hidden Gem series, we're gonna zero in on one of America's greatest bands, Journey, one of my favorites. We're gonna count down their top five greatest hidden gems uh, before the band was formed in San Francisco in 1973, as many of you uh, probably know, guitarist Neil Sean started out in Santana's band along with Greg Raleigh. After spending several years in the Santana band performing on the albums uh, Santana 3 and Carbonacera, he and Greg Raleigh founded Journey, which was originally called Golden Gate Rhythm Section. At first they were gonna serve as a backup group for professional artists from the Bay Area. At that time, the band included Neil Sean on lead guitar, there was Greg Raleigh on keyboards and vocals. You had Ross Valerie on bass and George Tickner at rhythm guitar, who both came from the band Frumios uh, Bandersnatch. You also had Prairie Prince of the Tubes on drums. Now, just after one live show in Hawaii, the band decided against being a backup group for other people and instead developed into a jazz fusion band and they changed their name to Journey. As time went on, uh, Ainsley Dunbar stepped in as drummer as Prairie Prince rejoined the Tubes. And after three albums, uh, the self-titled debut that was released in 1975, Look Into the Future that came out in 1976, and Next that came out in 77, the band changed their musical direction entirely. Enter Steve Perry. First, the band hired singer Robert Fleischman as they transitioned to that more accessible style of rock and roll. The band actually toured with Fleischman in 77, but there were differences between he and band manager uh, Herbie Herbert. Uh, during a live show at Soldier Field in Chicago that the band met Steve Perry, and what followed is, of course, the stuff of legend. You just knew the power of Steve Perry when you heard him on Feeling That Way. Raleigh, of course, departed the band after departure in 1980, and keyboardist Jonathan Kane came in for Escape. The band continued until an unofficial breakup happened in 88, and they came back together to record Trial by Fire in 96, then broke again. Years later, after several more lineup changes, the core of Sean and Kane remain with Arnell Pineda up front since 2007. Now for my top five hidden gems, I'm gonna focus on the 80s era. I'll do the 70s in the future. This is with commentary by Neil Sean and Jonathan Kane. So let's get into it. At number five, Chain Reaction from Journey's multi-platinum 1983 mega album, Frontiers. Chain Reaction. Chain Reaction. After the mega success of Escape and the advent of MTV, Journey was ready to go bigger. Now, the first single off the album was just a scorcher. Separate Ways Worlds Apart became one of the most defining rockers for the band. It shot all the way up to number eight on the Billboard Hot 100 with a, a very 80-centric music video to go along with it. Someday, love will find you. Then they took one of their best power ballads to the upper reaches of the chart with Faithfully hitting number 12, and that was much bigger than this chart position, such a big song. After the fall and center, my love were the other top 40 hits. I never understood why they didn't release Chain Reaction as a single. I mean, it's likely a little too rock heavy, but it's always been a fan favorite. It's a song about being uh, careful to protect your heart and the great game of love. Written by Steve Perry and Jonathan King with just a blistering guitar solo at the end by Neil Sean. <laughs> This song packs a mighty punch. Speaking of 80s-centric music videos, 
This one is definitely up to that task. With his black and white checkered tile and, and you know, the band dressed in 80s era tuxedos, hanging out with a, a creepy female mannequin. Actually, halfway convinced, actually, I'm convinced that the creators of the Andrew McCarthy Kim Cattrall movie Mannequin from 1987 stole their entire plot from this churning music video. Coming in at number four, you have Escape, the title track from Journey's 1981 Juggernaut. The album has since been awarded Diamond Status, Escape. It sold over 10 million copies since its release. It was on the strength of singles like Open Arms, which got Journey the closest that they've ever been to number one. It came out just short at number two. Don't Stop Believing, the biggest selling digital rock track of the 20th century. That went to number nine originally. Don't stop Couple other great ones. Escape was one of the most complete albums of the decade, for sure. Every song was special. Escape had uh, so much energy, the song. I've always felt that this song, Escape, and its subject matter is part of a trilogy of like songs uh, with a similar theme on the album, Escape. I feel like Don't Stop Believing and Still They Ride uh, are the other two. Now here's what Neil Sean, who co-wrote the song, and Jonathan Cain said about it. As we go into this interview part, I want to recognize our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses that I sport on the regular. Now when you go to zenny.com, you shop according to the shape of your face. I mean, you can always count on having an incredible variety of really spectacular and stylish eyewear that will look great on you when summer coming. It's time to pick up some glasses and some sunglasses. I want to ask you about Escape, the song, because that's always been one of my favorite Journey songs ever. Tell me about writing that, it's just such a great song. You know, Escape, I had um, brewing in my head for a long time and all the sections. And so, you know, I had all the music and uh, pretty much organized, you know, yeah. uh, with the arrangement in my head. And I kind of brought it in and, you know, Jonathan had just joined the band, John, Jonathan Kane, mm -hmm. and him and Steve sat down, they just went at it lyrically and, and with melody. You know, I, I had the arrangement and the chords and they just brought the rest of it. And, you know, it was, it's a classic case of you know, um, I think that, you know, you have those songs that were looked like they're there. Even though it was the title of our record, it was a deep track on the yeah. record. At yeah. that time, it was not a radio song. You know, it wasn't supposed to be a hit. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be a deep, you know, track. FM track. And that's what it was. The Escape was probably came from six cassettes, you know, that yeah. Neil gave me of different ideas. And, and he had all these. And I said, take with this bit. I had two machines. I had a JVC and a JVC, and I would bounce them over back and forth, back because we did. It's the only way you do it, right? So this pit goes into this pit, and try this pit, and I would come to rehearsal with you know all this stuff, and I and Steve would go, oh, I get it, and then we'd say, well, let's try this and let's try that. The great thing about Journey, though, is was the time we spent creating and rehearsing. Herbie had a beautiful warehouse, and we spent five days a week, mm -hmm. working on our craft. So when we went in to make the escape out, we made it in five weeks for $80,000. <laughs> we Jeez. cut all of our basic tracks in like two and a half days. Coming in at number three, same album, different song, Still They Ride. Jesse This song is incredibly moving. I've always felt that it had a, a Springsteen-esque mystique to it, you know, that quality. Written by the magical trio of Perry, Sean, and Kane. Now, in the liner notes of Journey's Time 3 box set, the band states that this song is a vignette from Steve Perry's youth. Coincidentally, the same Central Valley scene that inspired the 1970s blockbuster movie, American Graffiti. 
from another San Joaquin Valley creator, none other than George Lucas. Still I Ride was the fourth single release from the Escape album. It stalled at number 27 in 82, but it's always touched my soul. It reminds me of a dear friend who took his own life several years ago. This was a song that we listened to and we discussed it at length. And every time I hear it, it brings back those memories with a fervor. It's incredibly powerful and it features one of Steve Perry's most emotional vocals. Tell me how that song came about. Well, I was at Ian Hammer's house. Uh, upstate New York, and we were working on uh, Here to Stay, uh -huh. the second record I did with him. And I sat down at the piano, at his piano, and I kind of just clunk around with chords once in a while. But sometimes the keys are a good instrument for me to, to write something a bit different because I can't play it that well. And so when you can't play something that well, you think more melody than you do like chops. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you pick up a guitar and you some kind of like, all over the place, just trying to keep my dexterity up, you know, uh, and you don't get much done writing wise. But if you, sometimes if you play an instrument that you're not so, you know, well uh, tuned into First, yeah. and, and know how to play that well, that you, you'll end up coming up with something that's very simple and very cool. And so, you know, I started, I mean, much like Poco Harum, you know, it's a descending chord thing. And there was a verse. <laughs> so let me ask you about the part that goes, Still the ride. Still the ride. Na, 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 na. So did you come up with that first on the guitar and then he kind of sang that? You know what? I would say that I'm, I'm trying to recall exactly because we were rehearsing at the time and writing. Um, I think that, that, you know, I came up with, and then Jonathan came up with, and Steve sang it, and we kind of all three did yeah. it together. Again, that trilogy of Still They Ride, Don't Stop Believing and Escape, I just feel like they have similar themes. And if you listen to all three, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyway, at number two, from the 1986 album Raised on Radio, where the band switched out their rhythm section, replacing Ross Valerie and Steve Smith with uh, Randy Jackson of American Idol fame, the dog, and uh, session great uh, Larry London on drums. Now, London had previously played on many of Motown's greatest tracks. He also played with Elvis Presley, the King. Now, on this album, Steve Perry took over uh, as producer. He took the reins there. And this is where tensions in the band started to rage and would come apart after the subsequent tour. Raised on Radio, it was released in May of 86 and it peaked at number four on the album chart. Five singles were released from this record. It's a great record, very strong. Uh, there was the Journey-esque first single, Be Good to Yourself. landed in the top 10. It was followed by Suzanne Scorcher. That went to number 17. Girl Can't Help It also went to 17. But why can't this night go on forever? Stalled at number 60. And our number two pick, I'll Be All Right Without You. was actually a hit, pretty big hit at number 14, but I choose it as a hidden gem because you hardly ever hear it and it's an incredible song. To me, this is one of Journey's finest compositions. This is where Steve Perry gifts us with one of his Sam Cooke-esque pleading vocals. And then Neil Sean follows with an equally inspired guitar solo. just shows the beautiful duo of Perry and Sean that to me, one of the greatest pairings of voice and guitar in rock and roll history printed. It's elegance defined. Here's what Neil said about it. 
I'll Be Alright was, um, you know, the whole record was going more in an R&B vein and, you know, Steve was producing the record. And so he wanted, I, I believe he wanted to, you know, continue where he left off with his first solo Street record. Street tag, yeah. And it was more, it was more in an R&B vein. And so it was a different thing for us, but, you know, nevertheless, it was a great record. And um, I remember just, um, I was pretty wild in those days. And I hung out really late at night and, and drove motorcycles all over the place. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, I came in after being up all night, one night into the studio. And I remember, you know, getting yelled at by the producer. <laughs> You're not going to be worth it today. <laughs> and I remember that I went, oh, yeah, watch this. And so I went in and I did. I did one take and I'll be all right on the solo. And I did one take on Be Good to Yourself. And, and, and that, that was, was it. it. And I said, I'm out of here. See ya. Someday, baby. Now here we are at the number one position. And uh, it was a tough decision. But I have to go with one of Journey's most epic songs. The mind-blowing and soul-altering sledgehammer to the face. Mother Father from 1981's Escape. She sits alone. When this song plays, I mean, you could scarcely believe your own ears. Hey, mother, mother. Now, according to the band, this song was a composite of two tapes, one by Neil Sean and one by Steve Perry. This dramatic piece uh, with the first interlude written by Neil Sean's father, Matthew Sean was later completed by Kane and Perry. This song is definitely one that we'll have to revisit at length in the future. It deserves its own video. I'll, uh, I'll track down Neil, uh, Neil Sean, and we'll have to do an interview and get the goods. I believe it, it just raised Journey to the top echelon of rock composition. Definitely. Steve Perry steps up to the mic, and he crushes this really difficult vocal. He makes it sound easy. Here's what Kane and Sean said about the song. Kevin Elson, who was our uh, engineer at the time, was, you know, well, okay, let's let's watch this guy work. And uh, wonderful man, had a great sense of humor, but really strong vocal producer yeah. and got the best out of Steve. And Steve was just, you know, at his prime at that point. Yeah. He could sing. I mean, <laughs> he did Mother, Father in one take. Oh, that was one take. Yeah, I love those early songs, and I like the musicality of some, something like Mother, Father, because it's oh, a yeah. little bit more intricate with, with you know, classical chords, which is not something that we did a lot. So there you have it. Five hidden jams from one of America's most legendary bands, Journey, one of my favorites ever. Leave us a comment about this Hall of Fame band. What is your journey, Hidden Gems, Fiverr? Tell me below. What are your feelings on the magical trio of Perry, Sean, and Kane? What are your memories of their great music? Tell us below. If you dig our content, we do invite you to subscribe to be a part of our community of music celebration. Make sure to hit zenny.com to check out the glasses. And check us out on Patreon for even more content. Help us keep the music alive. So important in the time that we live in. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe out there.